Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now before we understand the process of facilitated diffusion, let us quickly have a re recap of the structure of plasma membrane. Because as I said, whenever we talk about movement of particles in a plant, the movement basically takes place from one cell to another. And how that interaction will happen? By passing through the plasma membrane. Because plasma membrane is the covering of each cell. So the plasma membrane structure, it is a lipid bilayer structure. So you have two layers of lipid. This is one layer of lipid. This is another layer of lipid. So this two layers of lipid are and in that two layer of lipids you have big proteins like this. This blue colored structures are all proteins. So they are present or they are embedded in this bilayer structure. Now when you look at this lipids, their hydrophilic ends are towards the top and the hydrophobic ends are toward the down. So therefore, if you talk about this entire plasma membrane structure, the middle portion of the plasma membrane is hydrophobic in nature. Whereas the ends, the both the ends of the plasma membrane, this end as well as this end, they are hydrophilic in nature. So these are hydrophilic in nature. So now, So that is how the structure of the plasma membrane is. So this is how it looks like. So you have the hydrophilic ends this side, hydrophobic ends this side. And on this are embedded proteins like this. So because of this structure, this model was given the name of fluid mosaic model. We discussed about all these things before. So in this model, it was said that protein icebergs are present in the sea of lipids. So this was the sea of lipids, the lipid bilayer, where protein icebergs were present like this. Now, as I said, this middle region is hydrophobic in nature. That is water haters. So this region doesn't allow water to pass through it. Whereas the outer regions are hydrophilic in nature. This is hydro. Similarly, this region is also hydrophilic. Now, what happens is that there are certain substances which are soluble in water. So, any substance which is soluble in water is hydrophilic, that is water loving. That is why they dissolve in water. So, any such substance, if they try to diffuse through the membrane, they are blocked by this hydrophobic region. So even they, even if they pass through the hydrophilic region, they are blocked here. Whereas any substance which is hydrophobic, that is they do not like water, the substances which are soluble in lipids, they are able to pass through the membrane. Because this region is hydrophobic in nature. So the hydrophobic region allows the hydrophobic substances but they do not allow the hydrophilic substances so that is why so this answers your question why is sub, sub, some substances can move on its own so the substances which are soluble in lipids can move on their own but the substances which are soluble in water that is the substances which are hydrophilic in nature water loving in nature they find it difficult to pass across the membrane even if if they are trying to move from a region of high concentration towards a region of low concentration. So what do they do? They take the help of these proteins. So these proteins will carry the particles from one end to the another. So they will help in transporting the substances across the membrane. And that is why this is called facilitated diffusion. So now the, both the questions are clear that why only substance, some substances need facilitated diffusion and how the proteins carry them. Now we will talk a, a little more about facilitated diffusion regarding the process, how proteins will carry them from one end to another. The substances with a hydrophilic part move by facilitated diffusion because they cannot move by themselves across the plasma membrane which has a hydrophobic part in between. This transport occurs across a concentration gradient. Now this 
type of diffusion can only happen from a region of high concentration towards a region of low concentration. The vice versa is not possible for facilitated diffusion. Now this is how it happens. Let us suppose this is your plasma membrane. This is the region of high concentration. This is the region of low concentration. So the particles should move from high to low concentration. But since the particles are hydrophilic in nature, they will not be allowed by the hydrophobic part. So they need the proteins. So now these particles will get inside the proteins and then they will be released on the other side. So that is how the particles will move from one part to the another or they will pass across the membrane. So proteins help substances move across the membrane. Now another important thing is about the transport rate. How fast this transportation will happen. Now more is the number of proteins you have the faster would be the transportation. However, this transport rate will reach a maximum value when all the proteins have been used because there are some limited number of proteins which are present in the cell membrane. But let us suppose if you have too many uh, particles to be transported, so you need carrier proteins for all of them. Now let us suppose if there were 10 proteins present in this a plasma membrane and all of them are busy in transporting some particles but you still have some more particles but you don't have a protein to carry them so in that case the rate of diffusion will not increase because you don't have anything to carry those particles so that is why we can say that the rate of diffusion will in gradually increase with the increase in number of proteins but once the number of proteins become constant that means there are no more proteins available to carry them in that case the rate of diffusion becomes constant because you don't really have any carrier to take them from one uh, part one region to another this type of diffusion does not require any energy input from the cell because cell doesn't need to spend any energy as the diffusion is happening from region of high concentration to low concentration. The only reason why we need these proteins is just to carry them. No energy will be spent in this type of diffusion. That also we need because of this hydrophobic part of the plasma membrane. That is why we need this carrier proteins. Now, how proteins help in facilitated diffusion? Now, some proteins modify their structures itself in order to help in facilitated diffusion. So now the question is how proteins help in facilitated diffusion? Now, some proteins form channels through the plasma membrane. So it is like a channel or a path which is formed in between the plasma membrane so that the particles can move through that channel and pass the membrane. Sometimes it is also seen that some proteins modify themselves and act as a pore, a small hole on the surface of the plasma membrane so that the molecules will get inside that pore and that pore will basically be a long tunnel like structure. So it will be something like this. Let us suppose this is the plasma membrane. You have a protein like this. Now this protein will act as a pore. So the particle will enter through that pore inside the protein. Now what will this protein do? This protein will rotate itself and then release the pore on the other side. Something like this. So this is how the proteins help in transporting particles from one side of the plasma membrane into the other. So this is basically outside the cell. And this side would be inside the cell because inside you have all the cytoplasm, cell organelles and all those things. So these type of proteins which act as a pore to facilitate diffusion are called porins because the proteins act as pore. That is why the name porins. Now these kind of porins are seen on the outer membranes of many cell organelles like mitochondria and plastids. So this particle here, the particle bind to the proteins, the protein rotates and release the particle to the inside of the cell. So this is how proteins help in facilitated diffusion. So now I hope the two types of diffusion are cl is clear. One is simple diffusion and the other one is facilitated diffusion. So now we are going to talk about symports and antiports. Now again, when as, as I was talking about the different ways in which the proteins help in the movement of particles. Again, you will see that there are three types of ways by which proteins will transfer the particles from one end to another. So what are they? 
first is uniport so it is a membrane protein now these kind of proteins which are present on the plasma membrane are often called membrane proteins since they help in carrying the particles inside the cell they are also called carrier proteins they help in transporting them so they are also called as transport proteins so the membrane protein that is involved in movement of one molecule independent of other molecules that is called uniport uni means one the word uni means one so something like this you have this plasma membrane you have a protein so only one particle can move through the protein at a time so it, it doesn't matter whether some other particle is also moving or in which direction so nothing else matters so one particle moves through the protein independently it is independent of all other particles movement the second type is symport so it is a membrane protein that is involved in movement of two or more particles in the same direction so this type of protein will allow particles to move through it only if there are multiple particles moving in the same direction so something like this only when you have multiple particles this side whether it is two three four or five and all of them should move in the same direction so only then this protein will allow diffusion otherwise it will not allow the particles to pass through them they are called symport or they are also the proteins are often called as symportic proteins and this entire phenomenon is called symport the word sim means synchronized like all multiple molecules are synchron synchronized in the same direction sim is also uh, related to similar so the particles are moving in the similar direction that is why it is called symport the third one is antiport anti means opposite opposite or against so this is that type of membrane protein which is involved in movement of two or more molecules in opposite direction so something like this you have one particle here that is outside the cell another particle inside the cell now they can be multiple as well but two particles at a time should move in opposite direction only then the protein will allow their movement so these are the three types of membrane proteins i mean when you talk about facilitated diffusion you have to talk about the transport proteins which help the particles to move across the plasma membrane so these proteins can be of these three types uniport symport or antiport thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.